All right, so today what we're gonna learn is how to transfer a property profile or information on a home or a property from RPR into zip forms to a new listing agreement, right? So in this example, you would be using this when you're gonna be listing a property and you wanna save some time and transfer the information from the property profile or the public information, right? So one thing I would do is uh, I would log into uh, RPR. And now if you haven't registered or log into RPR, watch my other video that shows you how to do that. For now, I already have it in here. You could always find RPR in our new Flex MLS. So if you were to click on Flex MLS, you go in here and you log in. RPR shows up on here. I already have my RPR link saved on my chrome uh application oh here we go on my chrome application so i have it set up as a bookmark however if you don't have that you just go to menu and the rpr uh product is on here so you can click on rpr you get redirected to rpr once you're in there you're going to input the property you want to you want to uh list the reason I say that is because if you were to look at the MLS, obviously it's not listed, so the information is not there. So we're gonna pull the information from the property profile. In this case, I'm just gonna, whenever you type in any address, it'll start showing up on here, but 84320, this is part of one of my listings. And you'll see that it'll start populating on here. So for now, let's just say I wanna do this one here, which I did last time. Just as an example, obviously this is not a listed property, but I'm looking at this here. And if I look at the property information, it's showing up. It's showing up a name of the owner, who owns the property, the details on the home itself. If we scroll down here, we're gonna see that it has the APN on here. So APN, uh, assessor parcels number showing up, as well as the description for the property. All the good stuff there. So this is coming off the property profile. What we see here on RPR is that we have the option to transfer into a zip forms transaction. So I'm just listing this property. I don't have it. I'm about to get started. So I'm going to start a new zip form transaction. And this new zip form transaction is going to be a listing. I click OK. What's going to happen? It's going to transfer the information into a brand new zip form transactions. And then it's going to direct me to go in there. Um, once I get into, into zip forms, hit continue. It's going to open up to that new transaction that was just created on here. If you watch my video on the templates, you'll remember that I have the option to automatically uh, apply a template whenever I am doing a listing uh, transaction or whenever I'm doing a purchase or an offer transaction, right? So I already have it automatically. In this case, since we selected a listing, the uh, listing template should show up on here automatically. So if I click on documents, oh, there it is. That's my listing templates already on here. So let's go back to the start. This is what we're showing, the summary. So it shows here the property, uh, the transactions name that's gonna be given automatically by RPR is the property address. You could always click on this little blue box and make any changes to that if you want to. So if you wanted to put in here uh, the seller's name, um, let's just say, I don't know, uh, what did we, I don't remember what it's name, but let's just say it was, his name was Torres and he is, uh, this is a listing. And that will change the name of the transaction. So now it's gonna show up that way, right? So here we come down here, all the information's on here, as you can see, and now that just saved me some time because now I have all the property information. I have, I should have the seller's information on here. So I have a seller's information on here. And then I also have my information from the template. So my listing information is on here. So now all I have to do for literally when I'm gonna go out there and do a listing, um, what I do is I just grab those documents that I know I'm gonna need, right? So, and I just print them out because for the most part with the listing, um, listing appointment uh, i do like to uh walk in there with the with these forms that have some of the basic information already in here like my name right however when i'm there i'm gonna start uh entering 
you know, when the listing starts, when it ends, what day am I there? The person's, uh, this should automatically show the seller's information. So uh, if it's not showing on there, you want to type it in or populate it on the cover sheet. Uh, for some reason on this one, it's not, it didn't transfer right, but I, oops, but I guarantee you if I go in there and I, and I modify anything on the, if I modify anything here, what it's going to do, it's, it's definitely going to, uh, start showing up. I believe it was like senior or something. So here, I don't know why, but if I just hit save, it's probably a glitch. Uh, I'm pretty sure now the name's going to start showing up. Let's see if that's the case. Oh, there you go. See, for whatever reason, it wasn't popular. But the point is, you save time. You already have all the information. Now, what I would do here for the listing, I would print the listing, uh, residential listing agreement. Uh, I would print an agent visual so I could do a, a visual inspection while I'm there. I would print the disclosure information advisory. If it's in an HOA, I will print the parking and storage disclosure. The TDS, I always take and print it out so they could fill it out. I give them this with the SPQ, which is the seller property questionnaire. I give them these two forms and I tell them, here you go. You have some homework. Let me know when they're when they're ready and I'll swing by and pick them up. So those two I'm printing, SPQ and TDS. And then I do print a representative capacity just in case a property isn't a trust or uh, if there's a power of attorney, if there's any other th situations, a probate, whatever the case may be, we might need a, a representative capacitive. That means that this gives the power to, for uh, an entity or a trustee to sign for the trust, right? From there on, uh, seller property, uh, I'm sorry, seller instructions to exclude property from the MLS. I print that one out because very likely I will use it uh, so that um, I have permission to not put it on the MLS right away because I'm going to be taking photos, right? And then lastly, market conditions. I always print and take that out with me. Um, and that's it. I do, I do print out our, our, our Keller Williams forms, these three forms. I will put a link on how to get these forms. If you haven't done it yet, uh, you can check my, uh, template, um, uh, video. And, uh, I will also put a link on my, on my, uh, drive and on my KW connect with these forms. So anyways, those are the forms I print out. I walk out there and I'm ready to go. Anyways, hope this helps. Talk to you later.